What's up, Warriors of the Goku? Welcome back to another Fan Lore Friday. And we have the next character here, Bian Yinhua, part of the Shiwong Army, made by Creamy Chicken, aka Detective Akechi. I didn't know which one you wanted to go to, if either uh, your YouTube name or your Discord name, so I just went with both. So, yeah. So, went over the backstory already and actually read over it. And gotta say that this is indeed a really, really good backstory, so I hope you all are just as excited to hear it as I was, because I was really excited to read it and everything, and it was really fun. And it's a pretty lengthy one, so be buckle up for this one, And it's a but it's a really good one too at the same time. I really liked it, it really shows the genius side of Bian Yinhua, shows the history of her, and maybe I'm also a little bit biased, I really did like this one, especially because they have a connection between her and Kuno, and then just shows how they ended up uh, being vastly superior against the Kage army, which is a really, really cool feature. Like, don't be afraid to show some superiority against the, your enemy, the, like the army that you're going up against, because Bian Yinhua, Creamy Chicken, aka Detective Akechi, did really good at showing that. That was really cool. It really showed just how brilliant this character is. So, big props to you for your backstory. I really enjoyed it. So, I will just say real quick, quick, quick disclaimer for you. I did pretty much uh, do all the information. The only thing I missed was the weapon of choice for the... Um, I know it's not throwing knives anymore. I know it is actually the I think it was the blade bow or something like that. You'll see it you'll see it in the uh, in the showcase video, which I've already done as well. So don't no worries on that. It regardless, it's fixed, fixed the musos and everything like that. But uh, let's go over the character here now and see what we can do and uh, check out that and then we will go into the backstory and then do the showcase. So the name, Bian Yin Hua, age one hundred and twenty nine, physically twenty five, but looks twenty one. Species, human, race, Chinese. Now, the weapon of choice, I believe, was the blade bow. Like I said, we'll have that fixed uh, during the show. That was already fixed during the showcase, I should say. Excuse me. Personality, whimsical, deceptive, appearance, green clothing. So now, guys, it is time for us to hop in here into the backstory. So buckle up. This is going to be a good one. I promise you that. And again, big shout out to you, Creamy Chicken, for doing an amazing job at your backstory. Really did like it. And so, guys, if you all do enjoy checking out this character, then be sure to hit that like button and comment down below your thoughts on the character. And, of course, if you're new to the channel, then be sure to hit that sub button because we are extremely close to hitting 500 subs. Without further ado, let's hop into this backstory. Bian Yinhua is a cursed human with a slow, aging, undying body who has witnessed the atrocious actions of human greed, demi-human vengeance, self-righteous mystics, and everything in between for years, but she still believes in a bright future. She grew up in human and ninsu communities, then served human warlords, nobles, and aristocrats as a page, a tutor, or an advisor for decades until she was impressed by a certain king and queen. She pledged her loyalty to them and rose to the position of royal tutor before their assassination. After their deaths, Yinhua tried to support Princess Xin Yang's right to rule after her uncle claimed the throne. Later, Yinhua resigned from her post to search for the princess after her disappearance. She tried to convince the princess to return home, but was unable to prevent her from becoming Kuno Zhu Wang. Yinhua continued to follow Kuno and tried countless times to persuade her against usurping the throne. But outside the throne room, Yinhua allowed her fondness for the princess to prevent her from going through with her plans. In the end, Yinhua granted Kuno access to the throne room and watched her murder the current king and crown herself Empress. For a while, Yinhua supported the new empress and helped stabilize the empire's economy and political alliances before retiring from public life and later resigning forever. After spending years as a traveling doctor, Yinhua became an urban legend in the rural villages and fairy tales, often as a mystic or witch doctor referred to as Lady Bian. Over time, she grew to be a lofty, childish, whimsical tactician who disliked conflict but enjoyed chaotic peace. During her travels, she also mentored quite a few of her descendants. Eventually, military commanders and kingdom scouts from all over the continent desired Yinhua's influence and wisdom and tried to use her to gain the favor of the peasants and aristocrats they governed. Fed up with constant demands for her allegiance, she planned a vacation to another land, but her plans were interrupted by her grandsons, Lei Qin, rebellion at the southern end of the human kingdom. She recruited her grandson Yang An and his nephew Yan Yan, then rescued Lei Qin and decided to take the trip with the trio. After reaching the new land, she built a small home in a region fought over by the Kage, Huoyong, and Shiwang armies, and tried to live as a hermit while her descendants went their separate ways. One evening, a Shiwang representative visited Yin Hua and offered her a position in their court. Yin Hua refused, but the representative continued to pay visits every day. 
the Kage grew weary of her dealings with Shi Wong and began to monitor her closely. On the seventh day, a girl named Haruna came instead and brought a new proposition for Yin Hua, a position as a close advisor to the Empress. After saying she would consider the offer, Haruna left and promised to return the next day for an answer. That night, assassins forced their way into Yin Hua's home, but were captured by her. Being merciful, Yin Hua stripped them of their weapons and clothing, then released them after learning they were Kage soldiers. Yin Hua retaliated later that night by using the stolen clothes as a disguise with Yang An and Lei Qin to infiltrate the nearby castle controlled by the Kage. Before dawn, Yin Hua incapacitated the majority of the generals and gained control of the entire castle. After securing the castle, she was joined by numerous peasants she won over by curing an epidemic. A few days later, the Kage were shocked by the news of the decimation of their forces and sent a detachment to reclaim the castle. Yin Hua's forces met them in battle and she proclaimed from atop a wall, Beyond Yin Hua claimed this land for the people who pleaded for someone to save them from famine and pandemics. If you want it back, you'll have to slaughter soldier, mercenary, and peasant alike. Cautious to attack, the Kage waited for reinforcements and monitored the movements of the other forces. To their surprise, Yin Hua refused to hand over the castle to the Shi Wang army too. After the Shi Wang led an army of their own to coerce Yin Hua, the Kage finally decided to simultaneously attack the castle and flank the Shi Wang army. While the castle was successfully defended, the army led by Shi Wang's Hikari struggled against the Kage's ambush. Yin Hua had Lei Qin and Shoko Yin rescue them and greatly impressed Shi Wang's empress with her tactical genius. <laughs>
私の戦略に傷をつけたことは必ずや後悔させて差し上げましょうこの一手で戦況を変えるのです